Hello, this is Professor Wick. In this video, I'm going to review questions on diabetes type 2 for nursing students. In this video, I'm going to review questions on diabetes type 2. These questions center on different phases of the nursing process. I will show you how to determine what the question is asking and how to get the correct answer. Then explain the rationale for the correct and incorrect answers to give you a deeper understanding and help you pass your exam. Let's review. Here's our first question. The nurse is discussing the importance of exercising with a client diagnosed with type 2 diabetes whose diabetes is well controlled with diet and exercise. Which information should the nurse include in the teaching about diabetes? Number one, eat a simple carbohydrate snack before exercising. Number two, carry peanut butter crackers when exercising. Number three, encourage the client to walk 20 minutes three times a week. Number four, perform warm up and cool down exercises. This is an analysis question in the planning phase of the nursing process. This question is asking for the correct education from the nurse. It is important to note that the patient is well controlled with diet and exercise. Consider those details as you reread the answers. Number one, eat a simple carbohydrate snack before exercising. Number two, carry peanut butter crackers when exercising. Number three, Encourage the client to walk 20 minutes three times a week. Number four, perform warm up and cool down exercises. The correct answer is number four. All clients who exercise should perform warm up and cool down exercises. The other answers can be eliminated because the client is not on insulin and would not need to eat extra before working out and they are not at risk for hypoglycemia while exercising. Finally, a patient with diet and exercise controlled diabetes needs to exercise every day at the same time to control glucose levels. Next question. The client with type 2 diabetes controlled with biguanide oral diabetic medication is scheduled for a CT scan with contrast of the abdomen to evaluate pancreatic function. Which intervention should the nurse implement? Number one, provide a high fat diet 24 hours prior to the test. Number two, hold the biguanide medication for 48 hours prior to the test. Number three, obtain an informed consent for the test. Number four, administer pancreatic enzymes prior to the test. This is an application question in the implementation phase of the nursing process. This question is asking you to give the correct intervention related to biguanide and a CT scan. You want to think about any possible interactions or effects the drug or procedure could have on each other. When reviewing the answers, look for one that addresses both of these issues. Number one, provide a high fat diet 24 hours prior to the test. Number two, hold the biguanide medicine for 48 hours prior to the test. Number three, obtain an informed consent for the test. Number four, administer pancreatic enzymes prior to the test. The answer is number two. Biguanide medication must be held for a test with contrast medium because it increases the risk of lactic acidosis, which leads to renal problems. The other answers are incorrect because number one, high fat diets are not recommended for clients diagnosed with diabetes and foods have nothing to do with an effect on a CT scan with contrast. Number three, informed consent is not required for a CT scan. The admission consent covers routine diagnostic procedures. And number four, pancreatic enzymes are administered when the pancreas cannot produce amylase and lipase not when the beta cells cannot produce insulin. Next question. The nurse at a freestanding healthcare clinic is caring for a 56-year-old male client who is homeless and is a type 2 diabetic controlled with insulin. What action is an example of client advocacy? Number one, ask the client if he has somewhere he can go and live. Number two, arrange for someone to give him insulin at a local homeless shelter. Number three, Notify Adult Protective Services about the client's situation. 
Number four, ask the healthcare provider to take the client off insulin because he is homeless. This is an application question in the implementation phase of the nursing process. To answer this question, you must understand what patient advocacy means and how you would apply it to a homeless patient with this condition. As you read the answers again, think about the meaning of advocacy related to this scenario. Number one, ask the client if he has somewhere he can go and live. Number two, arrange for someone to give him insulin at a local homeless shelter. Number three, notify adult protective services about the client's situation. Number four, ask the healthcare provider to take the client off insulin because he is homeless. The correct answer is number two. Client advocacy focuses support on the client's autonomy. Even if the nurse disagrees with his living on the street, it's the client's right. Arranging for someone to give him insulin provides his needs and allows his choices. One, three, and four are incorrect because one is an example of an interview of the patient, three is an organization for abuse in adults, and four would not be advocacy to take him off a needed medication. Next question. The client diagnosed with type 2 diabetes is admitted to the intensive care unit with hyperosmolar hyperglycemic non-ketotic syndrome coma, or HHNS. Which assessment data should the nurse expect the client to exhibit? Number one, Kussmaul's respirations. Number two, diarrhea and epigastric pain. Number three, dry mucous membranes. Number four, ketone breath odor. This is an analysis question in the assessment phase of the nursing process. The key to this question is being able to differentiate between HHNS, which is in type two diabetes, and DKA, which is in type one diabetes. What will the nurse expect to see is telling you that this is a typical sign or symptom of this condition. Review the signs and symptoms of HHNS and read through the answers again. Number one, Kussmaul's respirations. Number two, diarrhea and epigastric pain. Number three, dry mucous membranes. Number four, ketone breath odor. The correct answer is number three. Dry mucous membranes are a result of hyperglycemia and actually occur with both HHNS and DKA. So why are the other answers incorrect? Number one, Kusumal's respirations occur with diabetic ketoacidosis as a result of the breakdown of fat resulting in ketones. Number two, diarrhea and epigastric pain are not associated with HHNS. And number four, this occurs with DKA as a result of the breakdown of fat resulting in ketones. Let's move on to our final question. The elderly Hispanic client newly diagnosed with type 2 diabetes has been instructed on self-administering NPH and regular insulin in the morning and at supper time. When completing teaching during a home visit, what information should the nurse reinforce? Select all that apply. Number one, inspect the feet and between the toes daily. Number two, use magnifying devices to read the small print. Number three, Perform a A1C test once a week. Number four, eat a 15 gram carbohydrate snack at bedtime. Number five, inject one unit of NPH insulin after eating a snack. This is an application question in the planning phase of the nursing process. This is also a select all that applies question. Read the scenario carefully, but do not read into the question. You want to pick the correct teaching points for a type 2 diabetic. Read the answers again and ask yourself if it is true or untrue. Number one, inspect the feet and between the toes daily. Number two, use magnifying devices to read the small print. Number three, perform an A1C test once a week. Number four, Eat a 15 gram carbohydrate snack at bedtime. Number five, inject one unit of NPH insulin after eating a snack. The correct answers are one, two, and four. These are all correct teaching points for a type two diabetic patient. Number three is incorrect because A1C tests are done in a lab, not by the patient. And number five is incorrect because only short acting, which is regular insulin, 
or rapid acting insulin, which is Aspart or Lispro, not NPH insulin, would be administered to cover for additional carbohydrates if the client were on a carbohydrate counting regime with insulin coverage. That's it for this review. Thank you for joining me today. If you like this video, check out others in the series and click like, subscribe, and the bell to get notified when new videos are posted.